same offering unto Jesus. The Father, I'm alive. My family is intact. I have my job. I have my business. I thank you for the gift of life. I thank you that I can come into your presence without any hindrance. In the name of Jesus. This morning, we are a grateful people. We are a grateful assembly. We are a grateful church. And we have come unto our King to render unto him the thanksgiving and the offerings that is due his name in the name of Jesus. Bible says that offer unto God your thanksgiving this morning. There is certainly a cause to open your mouth and say, Father, I appreciate you. I thank you. I give you praise. I give you glory for my life, for my life. I thank you. We did not buy the air we are breathing in. The blood that is passing through our veins, they have been catered for by the message and the goodness of God. And this morning, we want to be a people full of gratitude, full of appreciation. Oh, for a thousand tongues to praise our maker. Lake Kabando Satadada. Yekabado Satadaba. Yebado Sandy Kapa. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Rapadi Apando Sata. We are a grateful people this morning. We are alive. Therefore, God will not cause those and his creatures to praise him. Rapado Kapalo Satadabanaba. We are happy to be here, oh God. We know we are here by your grace. We know we are here by your message. Ali Branko Tanibalabaha. E Kepele Kapa. For our children, Lord. For our families, Lord. For our nation, God. For you have surrounded us as a people. With your love, with your grace. This morning we worship your living name. This morning we adore you. Randa di Kaba. We salute your supreme master this morning. Ye Maro Satadada. Ya Pado Kapadi Ata. Ya Pado Satadaba. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and evermore. Ye Tali Kapadaba. Certainly this morning, we are a people full of thanksgiving. We are a people full of praise. Rapado Satadaba, we thank you for the victory you won for us on Calvary some 2,000 years on. We don't take it for granted at all. In the name of Jesus, Rapado Satadaba, we bless your living name. We give you all the praise. Power and might belong to you. We thank you for your goodness. We are going to see in the coming week uh, and in this month and beyond. We thank you for the promise uh, of a thousand times more in the name of Jesus. This morning, what shall we render unto our God for all that he has done for us? With the lifting up of our hands. Uh, as we stand on our feet, uh, as we lift up our voices, our Father in heaven, we declare your goodness, we declare your message, we say you are wonderful, we say you are awesome. This morning we are a grateful people, we are a thankful assembly, and we have come to say, Father, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory for the body of Christ, for the nations of the earth, for Ghana, for Ashanti region, for our children, for our husbands, for our businesses. We thank you, Lord. In the good times and in the bad times, you have proven yourself to be a faithful father. The Bible declares that even our mothers can forsake us, but you, oh God, you have been faithful and we thank you, and we thank you. Our wrongs are before you, but you pardon us and this morning our father we have come to say we give you all the praise we give you all the glory 
Lemaro Satadaba, you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, Jesus. We give you all the praise, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. We came to worship the King. We came to thank Him. Ramato Sikabadaba. Rekabado Sata. Yepadu Kabadaba. I am Tatabadaba for the unseen victories. Lepede Kaba for the deliverances, O God, for the provisions, Lord. Rekabadaba, you always provide for us. You lift us up when we fall. You have been our shield and our buckler. I am Tatabalaba, you have been the shepherd of our souls. Rekabadaba, but for the Lord on our our side, let grace feel say it. Allah brati kapa, ayan tadadada. You have become our salvation. You are our strong, our strength. We will sing unto you a new song this morning. Aran tadi kapa, our Father, our Father, be thou magnified this morning. Our Father who art in heaven, we lift you up this morning. Ali we praise your name Jesus we give you all the praise Jesus what shall we render unto our God what shall we render unto our God what shall we render unto our God the fruit of our lives our offerings of thanksgiving let the father hear your voice this morning in, in appreciation of his goodness in your mind you may say it did not go well but bible says that what the enemy meant for evil god turned them around for our good oh what manner of love that we also should be called the sons and daughters of god Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's the least we can do. We bow before your throne. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun, there is no one like unto us our God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, uh, we were like dead beings, uh, but your breath has sustained us. Uh, we thank you this morning for the lives of our children, for our nation, Lord. We will say thank you and thank you again. Our Father, we have seen the first Sunday in the month of April, and we are appreciative, oh God. Thank you, Jesus, for the graceful family worldwide for the body of Christ for giving us another chance oh God we are grateful oh God we are grateful we bow before your throne this morning from all the tribes oh God we have come to say thank you we have come to worship you we have come to bless you in the name of Jesus yes Lord amen say Psalm 146 he says that do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. For their spirit departs when they die. Yes. The Bible says in verse 5 that blessed are those whose help is in the name of the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord. You want to pray that Father this week I am looking up to you to help me. The help of man is, is, is very little. Yes. But when God helps us it's more. We are saying that Father this week and beyond you are our hope for every assignment we have for the week. Uh, for every assignment we have for the day. Our Father in heaven come 
and be our help yes, in the Lord. name of Jesus. Name of Lift Jesus. up your voice and pray that in the season of a thousand times more, the Lord will help you. The Lord will help us in every aspect of our lives, in our thoughts, in our relationships, in our businesses, in our families, in our plans, in our academia. We call for the help of God in the name of Jesus. This morning, as we are in the century of the Most High God, we pray that let help be released from above unto your church. The Holy Spirit is God our helper. And this morning, oh Holy Spirit, come and help us. Help your children. Help us, Lord, in the boardroom, help us, Lord, in the courtroom, help us, Lord, Rabado Sataba, in the classrooms, help us, Lord, in our homes, help us, Lord, in our thinking, help us, Lord, in our workplaces, help us, Lord, as we drive, help us, Lord, as we eat, help us, Lord, as we fly, help us, Lord, oh God, our help in ages past this morning we call on your help uh, for everyone connected to great hills uh, by blood or relation oh god our help we call on you for our nation ghana Robert, oh, in this year of election uh, come and help our nation in the name of jesus come and help our world in the name of jesus oh god our help come down may we see your hand of help in the name of Jesus. In the midst of the confusion, the Bible said the king turned and told the man, if God does not help you, who will this morning? We come to you, our Father, for our help, for our help in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to lift up our voice, we want to pray. This morning in the afternoon by 12 o'clock, we are betting a new branch in Tema. The Bible says that I will build my church and the gates of hell cannot stand against us. We want to stand with the Amen. church and with our Father this morning as we open the Tema branch. We are saying the Father, build your church in the name of Jesus. Amen. You want to lift up your voice and pray and we decree and we declare yes, that Lord. Tema branch is established in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, yes, lift up your Lord, voice Lord, and pray. Lord, we pray for Tema Branch this morning as they, as they take off, as they take off. They take off in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Father, build your church. Father, build your church. Father, build Tema Branch in the name of Jesus. Help yourself. Man, Reverend, Reverend Simon Ampofo, wherever it is this morning, as this new vision is bad, we pray that, oh God, you will build your church in Tema and its environs. Another avenue for the salvation of souls in the name of Jesus. We pray the blessing of a thousand times more over that branch in the name of Jesus. Over that branch. In the name of Jesus, as we pray this morning, let the corridors of heaven be open unto Tema Branch. We open the gates of Tema Branch, we open the windows of Tema Branch in the name of Jesus, and we decree and declare it is filled, it is overflowing in the name of Jesus. That branch shall be established by the power and the message of God. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus, that you are here with us this morning, working in our midst, mighty and great things, changing around destinies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Give a clap offering as we welcome the praise and worship today. Hallelujah. We bless.
bless God for a beautiful morning to come into his presence to exalt him. We want to read a text from Hebrews chapter 12 and the verse 22 as we read you want to meditate on it. It says, but you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. You have come before the Most High God. And I want us this morning to let reverent fear precede our worship. Let reverent fear precede our praise. Let it not be like just singing the songs for singing sake. Let your worship ascend to the heavens like a beautiful sacrifice. You want to begin to open up your mouth and lift up the name of the Lord. You don't need a song per se to start. You want to tell God, you are lovely, you are worthy, you are awesome, you are mighty. There's none like you, O oh Lord. We declare in our hearts and in this congregation this morning, there's none like you, O oh God. Holy, holy, are you Lord God Almighty, worthy? Church, lift your voice. Hallelujah, say. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Say hallelujah.
see the God walking. This is holy moment when God walks in on us. Every gaze is on the lion and the lamb. Come on, just sing. This is holy. This is holy moments when God was when God was seen on us every day every day is on the lion and the
mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Give somebody a high five, a big hug and tell them it's good to see you. I'm glad you are in this church. I'm glad to see you alive. We are giving thanks to mighty God. We are giving thanks to Jesus. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Everybody!
Hallelujah. Asam Babel Mate. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Asam Babel Mate. Say yes. Everybody. For Jesus, can you do it better for Jesus? Jesus is glorified. Hallelujah. Yes, Atiwe uh, Tiwe Kabo means that we are welcoming Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, Welcome Jesus. Oh, tell your neighbor, Welcome Jesus in the house. Hallelujah. In Nigeria, we say Atiwe Tiwe. In Igbo, Kabo means welcome Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to sing about Jesus as we welcome him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. I can feel him. I can sense him. The King of Glory is here. I can feel him. I can see the King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you see him? The King of Glory is here. Can you feel him? Can you sense him? The King of Glory is here. Thank you, Jesus. Can you feel him? Can you see Jesus? The King of Glory. Everybody ever said. Can you feel him? Everybody lift up your voice and welcome Jesus in the house. The King of Glory. Welcome, welcome Jesus. Come and take your place this morning. We can do it at you. Can you feel it? I feel it right now. The King of Glory. We the King of Glory. We cry Jesus. Everybody, help me say. Everybody, say. I see the two hands. Oh, 
you. Everybody is Somebody welcome to Jesus in the house. Ruler, He's here. Ruler of church, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come take your place, Lord. King of Zion. Yeah.
Give it up to Jesus. Everybody say, yeah. I just want to be with you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is it a good morning? I think it's a good morning. It's a blessed morning. Amen. Why don't you to turn to the person right by you and ask him or her, hey, good morning. How are you? Shake hands with the person. Ask him, how are you doing? How has your week been? If you don't know his name or her name, ask him, what's your name? Mention your name as well. Ask him or her, are you a member of this church? Have you been coming for a long time? Hallelujah. Ask him that how are you faring so far as a thousand times more. Talk to somebody. Just talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Amen. Oh, please stand. Turn around if there's nobody by you. Ask another person hi. Give the person a hi. Hello, hi. How are you? How are you doing? It's good to see you in church. It's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Great. This morning, I want us to pray for one another. So hold just one person's hand. Just one, not two. Just one person. Just hold one person's hand. And I want you to pray for that person. I want you to pour your heart out and say, I lift my brother, I lift my sister before you this morning as I come to your throne of grace. I am asking that you meet him or her at the point of her need. Even as we stand in your presence this morning, lift the person up before the Lord just in one. In Tools. Everybody raise your voice. Shall we begin to pray? Can I get some people pray with me? Can I get some backers pray with me? Pray for that person. You can lift up one hand and say, I'm praying for my brother. I'm praying for my sister. I'm praying for her this morning. That grace will find her. That mercy will abound unto her this morning, oh God. Visit her in this season. In the season of a thousand times more. Lord, raise yes, your hand over him. Raise your hand over her in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth let every prophetic word you have spoken let every promise of God concerning him come to pass in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus can you play some strings for me let's play some strings strings Rebete kata 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 Rabata apani mando pali me eperiada Rabata li mando saprande abota haya In the mighty name of Jesus so kotono Eka bala 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 baka bahataya Pray somebody pray Pray somebody pray Pray for your brother Ask the Lord to visit him Ask the Lord to touch him Ask the Lord to bring about a turn around In his life in the name of Jesus Name of Jesus, this year will not be the same as the years gone by. 2024 will be a different year. 2024 will be a year of a difference. It shall be a year of the visitation of God, a year of the power of God. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. May the Lord visit her. May the Lord visit him. May the Lord touch him. May the Lord come through for him. In the name of Jesus, suffer. He got a book of the cut of the door. He got a bed of the Yapanda Bahata. The road of Pokorombi Adabi Ade. The bed of the Yapanda Bosi. Yumbo 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 Lift her up of my hand. Lift up the hand of the 
of yourself, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I go to the Koyoko Yoko Yo, Rapateka Pata Pata Pata, no lie, no lie, no lie, no lie, no lie, Katila lie. I could have taken a little bit of those of us of us. Poor Pata 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 Psalm 121 I lift up my eyes to the mountains Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord My help comes from the Lord My help comes from the Lord I don't know about you, but for me, my help comes from God. Yes, Lord. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from anywhere. It comes from God, the maker of the heavens and the earth. He will not let your foot slip. He that watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he that watches over Israel will not slumber. The Lord watches over you. Psalm 123, I lift up my eyes to you. You who sit and throne in the heavens. As the eyes of the slave look to the hand of the master. As the eyes of a female slave look to the hand of a mistress. So our eyes look to you, O oh God. Till you show us mercy. Till you show us mercy. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Have mercy, O oh Lord. For we have endured no contempt, no end of contempt. We have endured no end of ridicule. Have mercy till he shows us mercy. I want you to cry this morning for your brother, your sister that you're holding hands with. And say, show him mercy, O oh God. 2024, this morning, not tomorrow. Show him mercy, show him mercy. Oh God, you are our help, you are our help. Show us mercy, Lord. Show us mercy, Lord. Somebody pray, somebody pray. Open your mouth and pray and say, God, show my brother mercy. Show my sister mercy, oh God. We look up to you, Jesus. 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 Mercy, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Nowhere in the scriptures did anybody ever call for help from God that God didn't help that person. Nowhere in the scriptures did anybody ever pray for mercy. Ask for God. When you go to him and you ask for mercy, he will show you mercy. I want you to leave your brother now. If you want to kneel, kneel. I want us to pray for the next five minutes. If you want to come to the altar, come to you know your situation. Listen, when we come to church on Sunday like this, we are all nicely dressed. We are all looking okay, looking good. But we know that there are issues in our lives. We know that where we are coming from this morning, we know, we know that if God does not intervene, if God does not step in, if God does not move on your behalf, this year will be the same. But 
somebody you want to say not this year not the year of a thousand times more somebody you want to kneel you want to lie down you whatever you want to call on the name of God and say oh God my help oh help me and lift me up from the clay from the place I find myself you want to cry for mercy and say God come through can we begin to pray for the next five minutes somebody begin to pray somebody pray we are praying for the mercy of God for the Pray, pray, Ranta <laughs>
never to go to the presence of the Lord and live the same. Amen. I think it's a crime I commit on myself to go into God's presence and return the same. It shouldn't be. Then I didn't go to God. But if I went to church and I went to the presence of the Lord, the least of it is that I must return with a word from God. I must return knowing that I have been into his presence. And beloved, you can come to church and not be in the presence of the Lord. You can be right here as we delve deeper into God and you are far away. Probably on your phone, probably thinking about something else, probably having your own expectation of how the service should be, who should be leading praise and worship, who should be leading prayer. Your favorite person didn't lead praise and worship, your favorite person didn't lead prayer. And that can be your preoccupation. But I believe that when we come into his presence, our main goal is that I want to encounter you any way, anyhow. Amen. And my heart bleeds when we come and we go back the same. When we come and we are caught up in our nice dresses and we cannot free ourselves and be who we are in his presence and allow him to work on us. But this morning I pray that God will visit you and touch you and do that which he must do in your life. So your life will become glorious and a testimony to his name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Quickly, I want to read a testimony from one of our brothers that was sent to me. He sent it to me in the course of the week and asked that I read it on his behalf, thanking the Lord for what he has done for him. And this is from Mr. Ajiman Prempe and the entire family. They want to express their profound gratitude to God for seeing them through a six-year legal, long legal battle. God has delivered a positive verdict for us and everything has come to an end successfully. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. Six year legal battle, long one, but Lord has delivered, I'm reading exact words, God has delivered a positive verdict for us and everything has come to an end. I pray that same will happen to you. That anything that has been in your life for a very long time, 
the Lord will bring it to an end, and it will not just be an end, but it will be a beautiful one. Amen. Amen. All right, before we preach, I preach and we share the word of the Lord. I want us to lift up our hands and pray for Tema Branch. We are starting our Tema Branch today. Amen. The new baby of Gracios is coming alive beginning today. I want to lift up our voice. I want to pray. I want to say, Father, visit them and let them become mega. Let it become a mega church. A place where your presence is. A place where your power is. A place where lives are changed and transformed. Can you lift your voice and pray that prayer this morning? This is a simple prayer. Please lift your voice and let's pray. Say, Father, let them branch be a place, a mega church. Let it be a church without walls. A church where your presence is, a church where your power is. Can you open your mouth and begin to pray? Can you raise right hand if it's okay with you? Or one hand and begin to pray and say, Father, we commit the Tema branch into your hands. Oh God, let it become a church without walls, a church with power, a church with dominion, a church with glory. Give them powerful testimonies, oh God. Give them all kinds of hands, all kinds of helpers, all kinds of workers for your glory. Lift your voice, lift your voice, somebody. Can I hear you pray? Can I hear you pray in the name of Jesus? In the mighty name of Jesus. Zafila Lo Safata Kahalaya. We pray that tomorrow God will be a, a mega church. We pray that it shall be a place filled with your glory. It shall be a place filled with your power. It shall be a place of transformation, a place of healing, a place of deliverance, a place, oh God, where your glory is made manifest, where your power is made manifest. We give you glory and we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, and everybody shall say a big amen. Father, open up your word to us. Let the preaching of your word be easy. Let understanding and insight come to us from your word. I pray that the word will be sweet to our souls this morning. Let every wandering mind be made steady, every heart be open, and made receptive to receive your word. May you be glorified when all is said, and I thank you for anointing my lips, O oh God, Father, with oil and with grace to declare your oracles in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray, and everybody say a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want us to stand to our feet humbly and read from Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, please. That will take our seat and I'll go to verse 4. Chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 2. Amen. Shall we read together? Ready to go, please. Oh, some of us are not reading. I hear only the ladies. I can't hear the men. Amen. Shall we hear the men as well? Shall we read together, please? As for you. You were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. In the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages, In Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can we read verse 10 again? Verse 10 again. Can we, can we read it in the Message Bible? I'm following my father. Amen. All right. No, we neither make nor save ourselves. God does both the making and the saving. He created each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work. Mm-hmm. 
Work we. Let's read it again. No. I can't hear the man. God does both the making and the saving. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work we had better be doing. Amen. Please take your seat and let's go to chapter 4 of the same verse. Chapter 4. And let's read from verse 7, please. Chapter 4. And reading from verse 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. Go on, please. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does the ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended high than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Next verse. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service. Did you see that? To equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up mm -hmm, until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. This morning, I want us to discuss post-resurrection. After resurrection, what next? When Jesus died and rose from the dead, and he conquered Satan and made a way by his blood for you and I to have access into his presence, that our sins were forgiven and were given a new name, that now we know that we are no more children of the enemy of the devil, but we have become children of God because according to John 1, 12, as many that believed in him and to those who received him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. We know that we have been filled with the Holy Spirit because he said that when he goes, he will send the comforter and he sent the comforter. The next question we need to ask ourselves is that, so after resurrection, what next? What do we do now that we know that we have died and risen with Jesus? Now that we know that he has won the victory for us, what next? I believe that it is time for us to work the works of God. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it is time for you to do good works. Look at another, another and say that it is time for you to do good works. Hallelujah. So this morning I'm talking about good works. Somebody say good works. Say how to do good works. Amen. It is time. The Bible says in Ephesians, and I'm going to be very brief and straight to the point. The Bible says in Ephesians that verse 2, chapter 2, verse 10, it says that for we are the handy works of God, created by God, molded by God, fashioned by God, designed by God, wired by God unto good works. No, we neither, the message Bible says that we neither make nor save ourselves. God saved us. He does both the making and the saving. He created each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. To join him in what? Oh, everybody, to join him in what? In the work he does. So when he rose from the dead and he said, I'm going to the Father, he also gave them an instruction, go into all the world and be my disciples, be my witnesses. This is what I came to do and now you have become joined hands with me. Go into all the world and be my disciples. Hallelujah. And one of the things you must be excited about is that I'm a disciple of Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. I'm a lover of Christ. You must be proud and you must be excited about it that you are a follower of Christ. Amen. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago when we had mass evangelism, 
A few of us just showed up, but it was an exciting time. I remember we went up there, Fanchimbra area, all over. We went to Opokuwai School Park and we're preaching to people and I was just excited. And all the people that were there were just excited talking about Christ. And I will approach people and they look at me somewhere and say, you know what? I'm just excited this morning meeting you because I want to share with you the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you about the man who came to love you just the way you are. You don't need to do anything to impress him. You don't need to do anything. He doesn't care about your past. He doesn't care about your present. He doesn't even care about anything. All he cares about is that he loves you just the way you are and that's why I'm excited that's why I'm on the street this morning just to bring to you good news about the fact that somebody died for you he loves you just the way you are hallelujah oh I say hallelujah listen he says that this is the work we must be doing created us to do, join him in the work he does the good work he has gotten us ready to do the work we had better be doing. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up your hand and say, I am created unto good works. Or say, I am created unto good works. To do good works. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. And this morning, that's what we are talking about. Good works. Let's welcome our, our honorables, our legendaries. Amen. The daughters of glorious Jesus, it's exciting to have you. Please, you are welcome. Amen. We are talking about how to do good works. And the fact that God created you and I to do good works. He did not create us to just wear nice dresses. He did not create us to do any other. He created us to do good works. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm created to do good work. When God created Adam and Eve, his intention was for them to do a good work. The work of managing creation. Managing all that he has created. And they were made a part of creation. And from that time up until now, God has always worked with man. God has always chosen man to do his work on earth. Amen. Oh, I said amen. And I'm excited not to be a pastor. But I'm excited to be a co-worker for God. To partner with God in the work he's doing in this end time. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. That's our default setting. We are here to partner with God. We are not in MPP. We are not in NDC. Neither are we in uh, Afrofront. No, 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 no. We are in the party of God. We are in the kingdom of God to become workers, co-workers, and to partner with God to do a good work. Somebody said to do a good work. Oh, somebody said to do a good work. Amen. And I want us to know that God is interested in our works. God is interested in whatever we are doing. God has interest in whatever we commit ourselves to do. Come with me to Revelations. Come with me to Revelations. Revelations chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Somebody say, God is interested in the works I do. God is interested in what I do. To the angel of the church in Ephesus, right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lambs. Next verse. I know your church. Let's 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 read it together. I know your I know your deeds. I know your hard work. I know your works, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate the wicked people. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them false. Next verse. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. The next verse. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. So God was talking to the church of Ephesus and was telling them, look, don't just think that, I mean, you are, you are saved, you are born again, so that's all there is to it, and play religion and come to church. No, I am interested in your day-to-day -day life, in your works, and in that which you are doing. Somebody say, God is interested. God is interested in my works, in my deeds. Whatever I do, whatever I'm committed to, he's very much interested. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. The same verse, verse 8. 
to the angel of the church in Simna, right? These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. The next verse. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those. You see, God is just, and if you read through the whole of the revelations, of Revelation chapter 3 and 4, where he talks about the churches, God was making reference about their works. Somebody say their works. Their works, their works, their works. And you go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, re, sorry, Revelation chapter, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, and then verse 8, all of it is mentioned there, talking about the works of the people, amen. And in the same Revelation, and it says that blessed are those who die in the Lord, for their works will follow them, say their works. Oh, say their works. Brothers and sisters, this morning, God gave me a simple message for you that he created you unto good works. And you want to ask yourself, what are my works like? If God should put my works on a scale right now, how will it weigh? Will it weigh to the left or to the right? If God should come to me right now and examine my life and examine my works, how will it be found before the Lord? The Bible says that when we die and their works will follow them. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Oh, I said amen. This scripture came alive to me when Lady Pastor Vilma died. And I remember when we wheeled her, her, her mortal remains here. And when we finished the service and we're wheeling it back. And then I was asking myself, so what is she going with? What is following her? Then the scripture came alive to me. And their works will follow them. Hallelujah. Or oh, am I reaching out to somebody? Say, I am created unto good works. When you and I die, when all is over and done with, you will not go with your Esquire, Esquire title. You will not go with your Deacon title. Even your name will not go. Nothing will go except your works. Same with me. It doesn't matter what I've done. and I've, No, no, no. My works are what will follow me. It doesn't matter how much property you have. It doesn't matter how much academic certificate you have. So this morning, I want us to shift our eyes from just the material things alone and begin to look beyond that when this life is over, when all is said and done, how would we stand before our maker? My good preaching or bad preaching or average preaching or excellent preaching doesn't matter. It doesn't count. But my works, the works I do, the works I do, the works you are doing, I'm asking you what works, what are your works like before the Lord? He says, I know you, I know you, I know this, I know that, but I have this against you. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Oh, I said amen. Good works. Now this morning, I want us to try and define what good work is. It says that we are created unto good works. What are good works? What do we refer to as good works? And how will we be sure that we are doing that which is good? I believe, number one, that a good work is is any work that is done in accordance with God's command and God's instruction. Amen. Any activity that is carried under the heavens in accordance with God's command, God's instruction, and done the way God said it should be done is a good work. Do I make sense? Oh, do I make sense? Hello? Any activity. Because you see, the scripture says that we are created in Christ to do good works. So our good works are not defined by political parties. Neither is our good work defined by even you or me. Because if we talk about good works, I'm sure I will have my own definition of good work. I'm sure you will also have your own definition of a good work. Amen. Oh, I said amen. But in Christ, somebody say in Christ. Say I am created to do good work in Christ. Not in myself, not by what I feel or what I think, but in Christ. So I'm saying that good work, number one, is any activity that is carried under the heavens in conformation or in line with God's command and God's instruction. That is number one, a good work. Amen. 
Oh, I said amen. It's a good work because we have done it according to God's plan. When we do it that way, it will pass the test. And God will approve it because we have done it his way. Amen. Number two way we can identify that we have done a good work in Christ is when we don't do whatever we are doing to please ourselves to, and to honor ourselves, but to honor God. Please, am I coming home? Do I make sense this morning, brothers and sisters? Amen. So good work number one is that which we do in conformation to the command and the instructions of God. Number two, a good work is that which we do not to promote ourselves, not to enhance and honor ourselves, but to honor God is a good work. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Number three definition of a good work is anything that we do with the right motive and the right intent. Amen. Oh, I said amen. So if I wear my dress and my whole motive is that they must know that today I have come. It doesn't pass. If I give money and the whole idea of giving the money is for everybody to know that I gave the money. Or my motive is to let the person know that, well, I am the person in charge. I'm the one who takes care of you. I'm the one who does that. When the motive is wrong, it, it naturally diffuses and renders the act invalid. Oh, do I make sense? Please, are you with me? If all of my shouting and everything is just to let the people know whatever, if I sing and my reason for being on stage and for doing whatever I'm doing, if my motive is that I want to also just be on stage, I want to also just preach so they can know that I can preach, that preaching does not count as a good work before God. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I said amen. If you help your brother and the help you are giving, you have an ulterior motive or your whole idea is that I'm helping him or her so that he or she will help me, it doesn't pass as a good work because the motive is wrong. Amen. Ask your neighbor, what's the motive for what you do? Oh, say, what's your motive? What's your agenda? What's your reason? Amen. Oh, I said amen. Hallelujah. So it's not about us. It must be about God. Everything we are doing, whatever works we are doing, if they will pass the test and be approved and accepted as good work, it must, number one, be in line with what God has for us, what God has instructed us. Number two, it must not be to promote ourselves. Number three, it must be with a good intention. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I said amen. So what is it that good works does? Why must we do good works? Why must he ensure that we are doing the right things? What is the reason for that? Amen. I'll go, I'll touch on this, and then I'll come to what the actual good work is, and then we'll wrap up. So I want to give you four reasons why it's important to do good works. Somebody say four reasons why I must do good works. Somebody say, I must do good works for the following reason. Number one, the number one reason why we must do good works is because that is what we are created for. And I've already established that. Amen. It's my default setting that I will do good works. I'm here to do the work of God, to do good works. Nothing else. That's the number one reason. That's my default setting. I am created to do good works. Number two. The reason why we must do good works is because it's important to God. Somebody say good works are important to God. And I'll go deeper into that. Say it's important to God. And that's why God recommends and commends the church for the good work they are doing. And the Bible says that and their works will follow them. It's important, hallelujah, that we do good works. Amen. Number three reason why we must do good works is that our works will follow us and will determine how we are judged. Say my works will follow me and will determine how I am judged. You know, every now and then as a church and as a, as a people of God, we need to always remind ourselves that Charlie, this thing is not just ending here. Amen. Do your hand like this. Look at your neighbor and say, this thing is not just ending here. Oh, say this thing... Oh, I said, look at your neighbor, lovely and smile, and say, this thing, this thing. 
Say the singing, the prayer, the fasting, the believing, everything we are doing is not going to end here. Amen. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. Revelation, that's a scripture I wanted to quote. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest from their labor for their, oh church, read, me, read, read with me, for their, for their deeds will follow them. Amen. Not the school you went, whether you went to a disco or in France, Memo, whatever, prem, prem, wherever, presec, wherever, it, does, it will not follow you. Not the name you carry, not the money you have, not the job you have done, not, nothing will follow you except your works. Amen. Oh, I said amen. And that's why every now and then, we all must sit back and ask ourselves, how are my works like? What am I living for? What am I committed to? What must be my core concern in this life? Because that is what will follow you. Amen. And we are saying that the third reason why we must do good works because it's what will follow us. It is what will follow us. And, 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 and you see, as I, I went through the scripture, I came to a realization in Dikin Jabo that oftentimes we call Psalm 23 and the end part of it. And we say that surely goodness and mercy will do what? Church, everybody. Goodness and mercy. Oh, you're not responding. Goodness and mercy. I might want to see you respond. Goodness and mercy will follow us. Amen. But today I'm adding another one to it, which is also scriptural. That it is not only goodness and mercy that follows us, but our works also follow us. Oh, brothers and sisters, are you with me? And our works will not just follow us when we die. As we live now, our works are following us. Because our works are like seeds we sow. So if you gossip about me and I gossip about you, that work will follow me. Oh, am I making sense? Am I making sense? Don't we even see right here that sometimes people go to that committee, that parliamentary committee, that they query them and they find out why have you used this money? What did you use it for? And what did you do that? And sometimes auditors come and they ask and sometimes people can be found wanting and even incarcerated. Our works do not only follow us when we die, they follow us right here on earth. Somebody say my works, they follow me. And they don't just follow us, but they assume a voice. Somebody say a voice. Oh, are you with me this morning? Say my works. Don't only follow me, but my works assume a voice. Amen. It assumes a voice. And if you don't believe it, come with me to the book of Acts. And let me explain this to you so you can understand. Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Let's read from verse 36, please. Say my works, assume a voice, and it speaks either for or against me. Acts chapter 9, verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Somebody say, always doing good. I pray that that will be your portion and it will be my portion. Amen. Oh, I said Amen. This one we are talking about post-resurrection. After resurrection, what next? We must move into good works. We must make up our minds that we are going to do good works. Somebody say good works. And name her name by Tabitha. And the Bible says that she was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died. And her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Next verse. Leader was near Joppa. So when the disciples heard that Peter was in, in, in Lida or Lida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Mm -hmm. Peter went up with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Next verse. Peter sent all of them out of the room. Then he got up on his knees and prayed. Turning toward the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. Next verse. 
He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then called the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them. Amen. Amen. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord Jesus. I personally believe that this resurrection happened and it was as a result of compassion from the people because they spoke about the works the woman had done. So how many of you agree with me? Amen. Oh, I said amen. And if you, in case you are still in doubt, let's go to Acts. Acts again, the same Acts, chapter 10 and verse 31. I say your works, they assume a voice and they follow you. Say my works follow me. Listen, it's not only family spirits that sometimes follow us. And it's not only I have resigned to one, one main conviction. That I don't believe that any ancestral spirit follows me. I don't believe any other thing because the Bible says that goodness and mercy is what follows me. I choose to believe God's word than to believe any other thing that anybody says. Amen. But this morning, I'm, understanding, I'm, I'm establishing another point. That not only does goodness and mercy follow us, but our words also follow us. And they don't just follow us, but they assume a voice. Acts chapter 10 and verse 31. And said, the angel said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Go back to the same, go back to 30, verse 30, verse 30. Cornelius answers, three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour and at three in the afternoon suddenly a man in shining clothes stood up before me and said, verse 31, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your what? Oh, remembered what? It had become a memorial. He had assumed a voice. He had become an altar. Say an altar. Somebody say an altar. So this morning I'm provoking and challenging you that after Jesus is gone to the heavens, it is time for you and I to rise up and do good works. Amen. Not only pray, but do good. Just respond, do what? Do good works. Because that's what we are created for. Amen. And I'm saying that our works assume a voice. A voice before God. That sometimes you don't even need to pray, but your works will speak for you. How about the king Hezekiah? The prophet goes and says that prepare your house, you are going to die. He says, he thinks, he doesn't even respond. To the prophet, he turns and faces the wall and begins to talk to God. And what was the essence of his prayer? One of the things in that prayer was that, see how I have laid all of my life for you. See all that I have done for you. And he stands on that and says, the Lord, look upon this and show me mercy. And God changes his mind because of his righteous works. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. Brothers, I'm saying, sisters, that our works, they follow us. And they assume a voice. And the things we do and the things we are doing, we all need to be mindful of it because they assume a voice. Now let me extend it and say to you that they don't just follow you, but it becomes a trail for your ancestors, for your descendants. Amen. Oh, are you with me this morning? Wave to me this morning, amen. If you're following what I'm saying, hallelujah. Your words. Up until now, there are places I go to and the moment I mention my name, Markin, somebody will say, hey, was your mother, Mrs. Markin, the teacher? Was your father, Mr. Evans Markin? And the moment they hear that I say yes, I enjoy certain favors, and it's mind-blowing. Why? Because of a good work they did. Oh, are you with me? Brothers and sisters, are you with me? So the works we are doing, whatever we are doing, let's not just think that, oh, it's just now and, and, and it's over. And then it's done with. No, it's not done with. Our children and our children's children will be beneficiaries of those things, whether they are good or they are bad. Amen. Hallelujah. So number one, I said that number one reason is that you were created to do good work. Number two, it is important to God. Your works matter to God. Number three, your works will follow you and determine how you are judged. Number four, your works will assume a voice and speak for you. Amen. Oh, I said amen. 
it will assume a voice and it will speak for you. Amen. So the next question is this. Now what is good works? Reverend, I understand what you are saying. I'm created unto good works. I agree. I understand the point you have made. That well God is interested in my works. I agree. The next question is, what are good works? Somebody say, what are good works? Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 10, please. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Verse 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, he did what? Oh, he did what? He gave himself the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers. Verse 12. To do what? Oh, those of you at the back, please. To do what? To equip the saints. Amen. So characteristics of a good work, number one is that good work is anything that equips people. Am I making sense? Oh, am I making sense? Please, are you with me this morning? Hello? Oh, are you following? Amen? I don't want to go down straight to the point of saying that good work means you should pray. Good work means you should play organ. Good work means you should sing. No. But I'm saying that the characteristics of a good work is that every good work does what equips people. So I want to ask you that that which you are doing, is it equipping people? Is it building them up? Is it informing them? That conversation you are having with that brother, is it equipping him in any way? It must either equip him to be righteous, it must either equip him to be moral, it must either equip him to challenge him academically, it must equip him one way or the other. Good work, that's what equips. Everybody say good work. Or say good work. Equips. Amen. So when we come to church and there's good worship, what happens to you? You realize that your spirit is lifted up. There is a release. But when it is not good worship, you realize that the worship ends and you are still at the same point. You don't feel anything. There's no touch. There is no flow. Amen. Oh, are you with me? You have not been equipped. You have not been, you have not been built up. Good work equips. Number one characteristic, it edifies. Say equips or edifies. Somebody say edifies. Oh, are you with me this morning? It uh, is a conversation edifying. If it's not edifying, it's not a good work. Hello? Hallelujah. It could be a beautiful song, but if it doesn't edify, it doesn't build. That's the next thing. Good work builds, it builds up. If it's good work, it will build somebody. It will encourage somebody. It will provoke somebody as long as it's a good work. Amen. Amen. Say, I am created unto good works. Say, I'm created unto good works. Amen. And this is not just about church. It goes beyond church. It goes beyond the four walls. This is our default setting, our day-to-day -day life. Whatever we are doing, whether as a nurse, whether as a teacher, whether as an Uber driver, whether as a technician, whatever you are doing, do a good work. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, do good work. That which will build. That which will edify. That which will equip. The third one, good work matures us. And it's all in that scripture. It says that until we mature, we are built up. We are equipped. We are built up until we mature. Amen. That's why I choose my friends in church. And it gets controversial when I say this. But I choose my friends in church. Every church member is my buddy. Every church member is my church member. Every church member have a relationship with you. But I have those I choose in church as my friends. Because I want to surround myself with people who will edify me. Who will build me up. Who will encourage me. Who will promote me and help me to mature in Christ. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Oh, why are you looking at me some way? 
Because I've made a controversial statement, right? And not everybody comes to church to serve God, I'm telling you. Some are here for various reasons. I can't say it on the pulpit. Amen? Oh, I said amen. And that's why even in church, you must choose your... And I say this, anytime we pass our new members, I tell them that, look, this is a hospital. When we go on Friday, when we go Friday by Friday to the hospital, there are certain words when we are going there, they say, if we don't wear a mask, they will not let us enter because it's a contagious word. The kind of diseases are contagious. You can catch them easily. It's airborne. So if you don't wear a mask, you don't go there. There are people in church, they are diseased, the kind of disease they have. Eh? You leave Jesus to work on them, but don't get yourself attached to them because they have a contagious spirit of gossip. They have a contagious spirit of slander. They have a contagious spirit of inconsistency. Where are all the people who filled this whole place? Last Sunday, where are they? Oh, are you with me, somebody? Hello? Hello, are you there? Please, I can't hear your voice. Are you there? Amen. But I want to walk with people who are desperate, who want to see God. I want to be close to people who want to work the works of God. I want to be close to people who are tightest, who are givers. Not people who complain. Who complain? They can complain now and even talk about the Father. When we lay hands on them, we do this and we do that. They talk about everything. I don't want to be close to such people. They are not ready for good works. I want to work with people who are crazy, who want to pray. I want to work with people who want to read the word of God. I want to work with people who even outside scripture. They are Christians who are focused. They are determined. They are going somewhere. They are, they are purpose driven. I don't want to work with people who are not going anywhere. Amen. They always sit at the back. Anybody who sits at the back all the time, trust me, believe what I'm saying. They always sit, always at the back. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I said amen. Listen, good works don't just happen, oh. This a thousand times more that we are talking about. It will not just happen. It will not just... Talk and work with people who have ideas, business ideas, who provoke you to think outside the box and challenge yourself. Oh, are you with me, somebody? Hello? As much as he says that, may the Lord God of your ancestors increase you a thousand times more and bless you as he has promised. Deuteronomy 111. It is God who will do it, but listen, you and I must also position ourselves aright. Who agrees with me this morning? Amen. Oh, I said, Amen. Position yourself aright. Amen. And do some good works that will provoke the heavens to bring to pass a thousand times more. Because God does not just release his blessings on people who will not abuse it, who will abuse, who will not use it for the purpose for which it was given. Amen. Oh, I said, Amen. Let me ask you, let me come down to your level. Street or so, and then you're just thrown because you have money. Who will do that? Oh, please, I'm asking a question. Who will do that? Amen. Oh, I said, Amen. Which of us will just cook because you love cooking? You will just cook, and then when you step out, and then you just be distributing the food all over the place just because you love cooking. No. Even us, we will not do that. In the same way, that's why Reverend Dad was talking about the Father. That thousand times more, it will not just happen because God says it's going to happen. It will happen for those who are positioning themselves for it. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I said amen. Hallelujah. So I'm saying that the characteristics of a good work is that it's that which builds up. It's that, you see... I want to stay away from the place of saying that when you pray is a good work. When you fast is a good work. The moment I do that, I get you into religion. Oh, are you with me? Hello? Oh, I say hello. When you give your wife money, it's a good work. But God will not bless you because you gave your, money, your wife money. God will not just bless you because you cook food for your husband. Because everybody does that. Amen. But anything you are doing, anything you are doing, and your motive is right and is in conformation with the word of God that is intended to equip and edify, that builds people up, 
that matures them that causes them to be transformed to become like Christ it's a good work amen so when I go down on my knee and I begin to pray I begin to pray and I'm praying for Sophie Kingsley and say oh God remember Sophie Kingsley remember his family this is the year of a thousand times more father touch him and promote him lift him up and anoint him I'm doing a good work I'm doing a good thing amen oh I said amen Oh, I said, Amen. As long as I'm doing it in conformity with the word of God, and as long as my aim is to help build the person up, it's a good thing I'm doing. Somebody say it's a good thing. Somebody say it's a good thing. And I'm saying that it's in Christ. What we do in Christ. Because as for the world, there we can do all kinds of things for the world. MPP can do all kinds of things. Uh, NBC can do all kinds of things. Amen. My road. I pray for a long time. I have sport my cast, sir. By the grace of God, some grace has found us. And they are doing the road. They have done it. Ah. Amen. I'll still decide whether I'll vote for them or not. Amen. But it doesn't count in heaven. Amen. Oh, are you with me? Please, are you with me? Because Job will not be. God will not give him access and credit in heaven because he did the road. No, the road he has done, he has been paid for. That's what I'm saying, that not every good work passes in heaven. Please, do I make sense? I'm just trying to come home. Amen? Uh, am I making sense? Amen. But that which we do, if he, on his own, he reaches out and takes care of the poor and the needy and helps and that one, it is recorded in heaven and that work will follow him. This morning, grace feels... Havilians, all I'm saying to you is that when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says that he gave gifts to men. And what is the essence of the gifts and the office? It's for us to build one another up. Encourage one another. Provoke one another unto good works. Amen. Oh, I said amen. Oh, I said amen. Challenge one another. Do good works. But above all, the greatest of all the works that we will do, that will count in heaven is when we win a soul for Jesus. Amen. And I cannot end this morning without talking to you about the Father. The time has come for you and I to make up our minds to be witnesses for our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Use your status to witness for Jesus. Use your DP to witness for Jesus. Use your IG, whatever you have, use it to witness for Jesus. And be bold enough to open your mouth and talk about Jesus. Talk about him. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's not talk about other things. Let's talk. Let's gossip about Jesus. In that group that you belong to, that relationship, that friendship, provoke and encourage your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, whoever. Let's encourage one another unto Christ. Build one another up. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's make noise about this man who has come to die and lay down his life for you and I. Oh, I thought you say an amen. I thought you say an amen. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's make noise about him. Amen. And let me say this before I drop the microphone. You don't need to be perfect before you talk about Jesus. Hello. One of the reasons why we don't do this often is because sometimes we look into our lives. We know our own shortcomings. We know our own frailties. We know our own frailties. He just said, go and be my witnesses. And as you go and as you talk about it, you realize that the more you talk about Jesus, the more you yourself, you are challenged to live for him. The more you are provoked to live your life for him. This morning, I'm just saying to you that he called you and created you for good works. Of all the good works that you can do, whether in your marriage, at home, at work, wherever, this one stands out and it will speak for you. When you talk about Jesus, when you share the gospel of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you share the good news with other people, this week decide that I'm going to talk to somebody about Jesus. I'm asking God for a thousand times more. What have I done also for God? That's how I end it. As I'm asking for a thousand times more, what have I also done for God? It is not asking for much. It's not even asking for your money. You know when you give, it's for your own good. He's not asking you to pray. When you pray, it's for your own good. When you fast, it's for your own good. He's asking you, go out there and tell them about my love for them. How I laid down my life and how I picked it up. 
how I did all of this out of love for them even though they did not know me or they did not even think about it and I'm calling them that they should come to me every one of us let's pledge our allegiance to Jesus and declare that we shall speak for you and we shall speak about you all the days of our lives in Jesus name Amen Thank you, Jesus. I, no, no, hold on. I pledge allegiance to the land with all my strength, with all I am. I will see to honor his commands. I pledge allegiance to the land. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the land. With all my strength, with all my I will see to us. His commands, I pledge allegiance. Sing it one more time with your hands lifted for the last time. I pledge allegiance to the yeah, we with all my strength. We good works and the characteristics of it I'm sure you yourself you know you know one of the things Reverend Simon doesn't do and we don't do in this house is to point out the faults of people because we all know our faults already true or true we all know you're a scammer here you know you're a scammer I don't need to talk and tell you that scamming is a bad work you know you know you know you're into betting I don't need to talk about it and that's why I didn't go into that amen Oh, are you with me this morning? You know, you know you are dating this person, you are dating this other one. I don't need to talk about it, that that's bad work and not good work. You know already. Amen? So I don't know, and that's why I didn't talk about all that. But I'm rather talking about things that we do that are good works. When we pray, when we fast, when we do all those things, the things when we sacrifice, when we forgive. When we let go, it's a good thing to forgive. It's a good thing to love. It's a good thing to overlook an offense. It's a good thing. Somebody say it's a good thing. Oh, somebody say it's a good thing. Look at Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. As we can remain standing. Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8. Say it's a good thing. Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. Philippians 4 8. Quickly. Amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, Havilians, whatever is what? Oh, church, read with me. Whatever is. So in case you don't know what a good work is, whatever is what. Entropy name, you say something, you're not even sure. You heard they say this sister has done this, this brother, and then you two have gone to tell another person. You don't even know how valid, how true it is. You have become a tale bearer. Whatever is true. Whatever is what. Oh, whatever is what. Is it a noble thing? 
So oba him a fe fe ti se o o so mo bu yesu be wo ma o de ni mboja ji won kwa now to me you hear you when you you will stop me because it's your birthday because it's what and you put it there is it a noble thing this thing you are saying to somebody about me about somebody about the other person is it a noble thing this business deal you are doing the business deal you will bring the title but ask yourself is it a noble business you are doing but is he a noble business i'm asking you you now ask yourself is he a good way is there a noble relationship you are in is he a noble thing you are doing whatever is right do you feel is it a good work is it right huh somebody has employed you church members employ church members you be misbehaved. A church member has employed you and you're misbehaving just because the, your boss is a church member. Is it right? That you spend the whole time at work, WhatsApping and on social media. Is it right? The small secretary and says, and one farm, you have pocketed it. I'm asking you, is it right thing? Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. I don't know if I say your ocean department. Na yen yina yet me tinasi, it didn't come on, a cup boom, it did nan so your ocean so when you win kasa, ya wa kwa when you win kasa, your prayer department, when you win ever issues. What is that? What good work is that? What you will be sick at one person will be here. And when you will be here, then you have issues. I'm on it. Oh, can you drop me at a tinga junction? And then, I mean, you sit in the car and you have your phone on and you are playing. What, what is that? What is that? And if they don't give you a church message, they say, no, 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 no. Somebody say good works, good works. Oh, somebody say, look at your neighbor, turn to me and say, my brother, my sister. From this moment onwards, catch us a yes, we was or a we know say good works, say good works, huh? And son, I shall with fridge in my huh? What are you teaching your children? Alcohol is not, it's not sin, it's a fact, there's no doubt about it, amen. Oh, are you with me? Yes. But what are you teaching your children? A whole dicking and Juma will ball come you know. I want to give my life for you. I want to. Man, 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 man. I don't even know how to sing it. But all your songs, what was that? Huh? How can we be in the choir? You, 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 and me. And we are all here singing to God, yet you have an issue with me in your heart. And you won't talk to me, and you won't greet me. What is that? Then what are we doing here? Hello? You have found a church member where many name is here. Many name is here. Hey, and to say, I'm so cast on where we are. What are you going to do? Please, am I coming home this morning? Whatever is admirable, let's do that which is admirable, which is pure. Amen. Oh, I said, Amen. Oh, my mia, what did that dad that you are still holding on to it? You have crossed the name. I will never talk to my mother. As for this, my brother, Rev, it's okay, it's okay, Rev, it's okay. When you talk to church members, then they start, Rev, it's okay, Rev, it's okay. And then you must also know that you must also back, 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 back off. Amen. This morning, every line you have dropped, we erase that line. Remove that line. Oh, I said, remove that line. Let's do good works. Because they will speak for us, my sisters and my brothers. They will follow us. Sometimes you don't need to pray. Your good work will follow you. It will speak for you. Goodness and mercy will follow me. My good works will follow me. A thousand times more, it will manifest when we get to the place of good works when we do good god will say hey these people anything i will do for them it will not change them let me release the blessing unto them hallelujah
Oh, I say hallelujah. Lift your hand and let's pray this prayer. This one say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for my life. Thank you, everybody, please. Thank you that you died on the cross for me. Thank you that you laid your life down just for me. This morning, I understand I am created to do good works. Father, I acknowledge that I, I am doing some good works. But in some other areas, I am failing or I have even failed. But sincerely, I ask for forgiveness. And I ask that have mercy on me. From today, I yield my body. I yield my members. I yield all of me to you. And I'm asking the Lord hold my hand and lead me on to do good works at my workplace, in my family, in my marriage, in my home, in my business, in everything I'm doing. Help me, God, to do good works. That which is pure, that which is right, that which will edify, that which will build up, that which will cause others to know you. That's what I want to do. Lift me up and place me there in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I said amen. I said amen. I said amen. I said amen. Oh, somebody say, turn to your neighbor and say, let's do good works. Turn to another and say, let's do good works. Amen. Have you been blessed this morning? Amen. Straight up, I want us to receive the ministry of the daughters of glorious Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Whilst they are coming, if you are bringing your tithe, please come. If you are bringing your tithe, please come. Whilst they come upstage and they get themselves together. If you are bringing your tithe, please quickly come. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Titan is a good thing. Shake your hand, your neighbor's hand, and say, Titan is a good thing. So keep doing it. It will follow you. Amen. Lift it up and say, Father, I thank you for the opportunity to do the spiritual thing, to honor you with my tithe. I acknowledge that I don't have any other helper but you. Only you can change my finances. This morning, as I raise my offering, my tithe before you, I'm asking that throw open the windows of heaven. Release so much blessing upon me. Let my life be a blessing. Let me bless other people also. Say, Father, 2024, I declare I will never lack. I will have money all the time. More than enough to bless others. Say, my business is blessed. My home is blessed. My children are blessed. My unborn children are blessed. Everything connected to me and around me is blessed. Say, this is my year of a thousand times more. I am going to overflow with grace and finances. In Jesus' name, amen. Drop in and give praise to God. Hallelujah. We'll receive the ministry as the minister will bring our offering as well. When we are done, we we'll declare a prayer over the offering. Amen. Welcome. That was so wonderful. Shall we give the man of God a clap offering? Amen. Man of God, please wait. This is your special invitation to the glorious praise. Amen. Thank you, you very welcome. much. Yeah. I receive it. Amen. Amen. I'm sure this will go to daddy, so I receive it on behalf I have of given daddy. His to All right. Thank him you. Already. Thank you. I was here last week. Thank you. To Thank give you. his to him. I'm grateful. Yes, please. God bless you. Amen. Bless Praise you. the Lord. Um, in fact, we are not visitors in this church because we've known ourselves, Reverend Simon and Reverend Asma, over 30 years. Yes. And so um, I was here last week to invite him and all of you to our annual program we normally do um, every year. Do I have my brother Michael here? Michael, Michael, up here. 
Oh, okay, I think he didn't come to church. Okay, yeah, so I spoke with Reverend that we want to come and invite you to that glorious praise. We do it every year, but for some time we stopped. But this year we plan to do it next Sunday. That is exactly today's week. Man of God, may God bless you. The message was so powerful. God is interested in our good works. In fact, he's interested in our good works. Not everywhere, but good ones. And by the grace of God, the daughters, we have been together for 35 good years. This year. And any time that we hear people, we meet people, and they, they tell us, it was through your music I gave my life to Christ. We are so excited. Just three, three weeks ago, we went to visit somebody, and we met a pastor. When he saw us, he, he was rushing to shake us, and he told us blankly, straight, that I gave my life to Christ through your song. It's, it's one of the good ways. We are trying our best. What are we doing for God? We should allow ourselves. We started doing this. For me, I was like eight years when we started doing this. And I thank God we are still on. We are still counting. And so we are here to invite you to come and support us. It is free. We are not taking anything. Because um, we were planning with... Um, uh, uh, one of our father and then uh, uh, patron yes who just died um, on the 14th of February maybe you've heard of uh, 14th of February yes that is of um, Oman FM in, in Accra he is our younger father and in fact we nearly stopped because we were planning the whole thing with him and all of a sudden it just happened so we decided to do this in honor of him we have Accra and then we are moving to Kumasi just to do it but when we were planning we decided anything that we are going to get we would just take it and proceed you know the daughters anytime that we come out with something we try to give back to the society and this one we are just doing it to help the breast cancer patient who doesn't have money to support and you know save their lives and so when you come please we are not taking any gate fee but when you are coming please pray so that the lord will lay something on your heart and bring it to support the worthy cause god bless you so much i know you will come right Pentecost time near 4 p.m. sharp. And so we are inviting all of you. D, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. You can't daughters now. You were running away, right? Because you don't know how to sing daughter's song. You know. Okay, then stand there. Yes, if you want to do music and you don't listen to daughter's song, you are not doing it. I'm telling you, it's a fact. Oh, yes. Even for us to be together for 35 years, it's a plus. So, please. Anytime you don't run, I will stand and sing. Okay. I'm saying, he's right, don't bury my
Let's clap for them, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Can you please raise your hand up, please? If you are young like me, you can please stand to your feet. Amen. Say, Father. I thank you that I belong to the field of grace, the place of abundance. I declare today that in this year, 2024, I and poverty have no relationship. Say, I and lack have no relationship. Say, I have crossed over by the death of Christ and his resurrection. I have crossed over from the place of lack, from the place of little, to a place of abundance. Please say, to a place of abundance. Say, I declare that from now to the end of the year, I'm in my season of the overflow of the thousand times more. Say, I will have more than enough all the time to be a blessing to others. Say, Father, I open up my mind for ideas from heaven as to how to make money and how to become rich and how to become prosperous. Say, I open up my mind for heaven's ideas, ideas for success, for prosperity, for direction. I open up my heart. I open up my spirit. I open up my life for the best of heaven to come to me. Goodness and mercy will follow me. My good works will follow me. I am prosperous. I am highly favored. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, have we prayed. Everybody say amen. Thank you. Please take your seat as we take the announcements. Amen. Hi, 
This is Gracefield Chapel, Havila City Temple, where we reach out to the world with love, train Christians for excellence, and raise an end time army for the Lord. It's a pleasure having you in church today. If you are visiting us for the first time, you're warmly welcome. Kindly wait behind after service for a brief period of interaction and refreshment. If you are visiting us for the second time, we are excited you came again, and we hope you consider making Gracefield Chapel your permanent place of worship. Our online prayer meeting continues unabated, Mondays from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., and on Fridays from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Join in, let's have a corporate time of prayer, and be blessed. The leadership of the children's ministry would like to meet with all parents today after service at the auditorium. Parents are kindly entreated to be a part of this all-important meeting. Home cell meetings for the month of April are scheduled as follows. This evening between the hours of 4 and 7 p.m. and on Friday the 12th of April 2024 between the hours of 6 and 8 p.m. These meetings will take place at our various home cell locations. Home cell leaders are particularly to take note and prepare accordingly. The moment number for the care ministry is 0598-991234. 0598-991234. Members are kindly to note that all monies going into the care ministry should be sent through this number and not through the church's main momo line. God bless you for supporting the care ministry. Grace and Splendor, Havila City Temple brings to you the ninth of a thousand more in drama, choreography and music on the 31st of May 2024. It will be a fun-filled, grace-filled night. Tell a friend to tell a friend and book the date. If you'd like to send money to the church via Momo, please do so through 0241-150-743. 0241-150-743. The Gracefield Merchant ID is 555093. 555093. You could also pay via pay link at pay.gracefields.org. Pay.gracefields.org. Thank you for your attention. Let's meet on Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. for midweek service. God bless you. Bye. Amen. Very, very excellent, very brilliant. God bless you. Amen. Right, so just a little emphasis and then we are out of here. Online prayer, remember she just mentioned Monday, tomorrow, 3 p.m., Friday, 5 a.m. Online, please, let's make sure we join. After the fast, a lot of us have gone to sleep, but the devil hasn't gone to sleep. So let's not sleep. Amen. Let's all be up and doing a thousand times more. When we pray not because of the devil... We pray because prayer is what connects us to God, gives us power for daily survival. So please make sure you join the online prayer. Midweek service, Wednesday, 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. It's going to be an awesome time. Please don't miss it. Home cell meetings comes off this evening at the various places. Please, let's all make sure we join our home cell. We have said that going forward, what we are going to do, and we are going to enforce it, I think I've been a bit lenient on that, but I'm going to make sure I enforce that. I want to come to the point where we become just like some other churches, some Orthodox churches and some charismatic churches who have a strong cell system so that we'll get to the place where if you're going to have a wedding, it's your cell group that is responsible, as in they are supposed to stand with you. If you have a funeral, you have to route everything through your cell group and they are supposed to stand with you and be with you want to get to a place where everybody is an active member of a cell. So I'm pleading with all of us, if you don't know yourself, see uh, Lady Mr. Kim. Where's Lady Minister Kim? Yes. See her. She will assist you. Or you can see also for Edwin as well. They can assist you. Make sure you join and make sure you are committed fully to the cell. Love Field Cell Group will have a short meeting where you meet all the time. Love Field consists of those in soccer band Tim, uh, Sokoban, Timpum, uh, Ampayo, Wood Village, Abu Abukesi, Kwamuma, Ampami, Trede, and uh, those that are with, within that enclave. I'm sure you know where you meet. You meet for five minutes right after service. Please make sure you are part of that meeting. All right. 
Sheffield's ministry and sub-ministries retreat comes off on the 19th of April, 2024. Members should kindly take note of that. Home sale and Bible study teachers meet 20 minutes after service next week Sunday. So next week Sunday, 20 minutes after service, home sale and Bible class teachers will have a short meeting. Amen. Great. We'll have a review meeting for all home cell leaders, Bible class teachers, as well as all the heads of ministries. 20 minutes after service. We are closed early today. So 20 minutes after service, that's 11.30. Please let's all gather right here for a short meeting. And then we shall be done for the day. God bless us all. Amen. All right, let's welcome those who are visiting us for the very first time. Today is the very first time you are visiting us. Give me a wave. Give me a wave. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Oh, give me a wave. Give me a wave. Oh, oh raise a high, high, high. We're excited you are here. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Those of you close by, I thought you would shake their hands and welcome them and let them feel at home. Amen. All right, so please pick your bag and your Bible, anything you have. Kindly walk to the front. Let me just give you a warm welcome. Please, let's welcome them as they come. Amen. Help them to come. Help them. Help them to come. Help them to come, please. Let's clap for them as they come. Let's clap for them as they come. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, I remember I saw some hands up there. Clap for them as they come, please. Amen. Great. I want you to know that we are so excited you have come to church. This is a good place. God is here. He's a member of this church. Amen. I can show you his seat right now. You know that God is here. Amen. So thank you so much for coming on behalf of our senior pastor who is in Accra with Lady Reverend Pell. We are in Accra at the moment. We'll be going to Tema to start our new branch. I welcome all of you to Grace Fields. Amen. I, I trust you have been blessed this morning. Amen. And we thank God for your lives. We pray that the grace of God that is in this house will strongly be evident in your life also. And you will say that the day I went to Grace Fields, from that day, my life has never ever been the same. Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. Please stand and follow our lady. The church has got lunch for you. Amen. This is the church that when you come to for the first time, there's lunch for you. Is that good news? Auntie, is it good news? Amen. Auntie is smiling. Amen. Please stand and follow our lady as she takes you to where our visitors are received. Let's clap for them as they go. Thank you very much. God bless you. Clap for them. Clap for them, clap for them, amen. Shall we stand to our feet as we close? Amen. Let's keep clapping until they leave, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Great. All right. So please stand. Teens, all the teens, you have a meeting with your teachers upstairs right after service. All teens, so please move upstairs right after service. And have a short meeting with your teachers. Amen. Look at somebody. Hold the hand of the person. Hold somebody's hands. Just one person. And say, may the grace. Look at the person and say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I said, look at the person. Say, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this week and forever in Jesus' name. Say, go and do good works. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless us all. All right.